try to address the question of, of uh, who should be paying for drug discovery and development and how much of this should be thought of as a, as a right that is uh, subsidized by the government. The first point I'd make is that there's no free lunch. Um, at the end of the day, drug discovery and development is costly and it's risky. Somebody's going to pay for that. Now, if it's not paid for by the investors in these companies, and if it's paid for by the government, it's still ultimately going to be paid for by the taxpayers. So uh, it, it really doesn't change the ultimate cost by saying, uh, we'll have the government do it. And, you know, arguably, in my opinion, the government might not do it as well, uh, because the uh, uh, corporations are incentivized to try to do things efficiently and effectively, and they're willing to take risks with their money that the government might not be and that you might not want them to as taxpayers. I do think, and I think most people in the industry would agree with this, is that people who cannot afford medicines, that we either as a society or as individual companies need to make those available to them. It comes basically down to the fact, as I said earlier, that this is a industry that depends on spending large amounts of money over long periods of time and taking gigantic risks in order to generate a few drugs. I think the best kind of learning once you become a reasonably senior executive at any company is through mentorship. In my career, both the best things that have happened to me and maybe in some cases the most challenging have either been because I did have a good mentor or because I didn't work hard enough to develop a good one. But there's nothing, there's no substitute in my opinion if you're an executive at a company from talking to people who either are or have done what you're doing.